Hey, this is Mike, creator of the graphic novel Spectre A Dark Matter. In this video, I'm going to show you how I color my comic book covers. Here's my latest cover here. And my comic books are typically um, black and white on the inside, but I like to do color covers. And I'm going to show you the techniques I use for doing something like this. Uh, to keep this moving along and keep these videos short, I'm going to break this uh, video tutorial up into probably two or three videos. We'll see how it goes. So let's start. Um, we're just going to color one image of my main character, Spark, here. Uh, I did a black and white image, uh, drew it, inked it, and scanned it in, and I did a video tutorial about how to scan your inked images for rendering. Uh, you can find that video and if you subscribe to my Viridian uh, channel on YouTube. Anyway, so when you first scan your image in, you get a one layer that's locked called background. And I need to, uh, to, to change that so I can edit it. So uh, the first thing I want to do is double click background and uh, I'm going to just change that layer. And I'm going to rename this layer black lines just so I know what my original layer is. And the next thing I want to do is I want to get rid of, I want to separate the white background from the black lines. So I'm going to use my magic wand tool here, uh, select, make sure contiguous is unchecked, and then select the white. Hit delete, and that will isolate your black lines. Hit uh, right click and hit deselect to get rid of the marquee. I'm going to create another layer and call it white background. I'm going to select the white paint, the white paint, the paint bucket, and just fill that in. So now I basically have the same thing I had before, but now I isolated the black lines from the white background. And I do this so that I can color underneath the black lines, you know, so I don't have to be exact. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start selecting colors for my uh, my image here. And uh, since I have the color palette already selected for my character, Spark, here, I'm just going to use this as a basis. But uh, you can easily select colors from your uh, color boxes here. So I'm going to use my eyedropper tool, and uh, I'm going to start with the blue coat. So I'm going to create a new layer and just call it blue coat. Blue coat. And the next thing I'm going to do is just select my pencil tool, uh, select a uh, pixel size that's appropriate, and start coloring in. And it's okay if you go outside the lines, you can always erase. going to basically fill things in. Another thing you can do, and I do this uh, often, is I'll use the, um, the lasso and I'll select the entire area that I want to color in. And then you can use your paint bucket just to fill in. And I'll do that in a minute so you can see how that's done. But because there's not much here for blue, I'm just going to Just fill all this in here. I'm coloring more than I would intend, but using the layers, using different layers, I'm going to be able to fill in the different colors over this blue. Okay. So that's the coat filled in. Next thing I want to do is just select my pants. Now, the pants, I actually have a texture associated with that. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab this texture from this drawing. I use the marquee tool, copy it, and then I'm going to create a new layer for pants. And I'm just going to paste it on here. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my lasso tool, and I like to use the polygonal lasso, and I'm going to just select the area of the pants that I want to 
color with this pattern. With this, uh, it's just a blue pattern with noise in it. So I'm just going to click around until I get back to my starting point. And when I get to the end, a little circle will appear next to the lasso. You can see it there. And if I click there, it'll, it'll close. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the clone stamp here and select a larger uh, diameter pixels. And I'm going to hit Alt. Hit the Alt button while I'm where I want to basically copy. And then I can start. Start filling in, and because the marquee tool has isolated this section off, it's only going to fill in the inside. Now, what I do is I hit Alt, and it shows this little target here, and then I click, left-click the mouse, and then you can see that I'm basically uh, the little plus sign on the screen is showing where the uh, clone stamp is cloning from. So. I constantly reselect reposition by hitting the alt key clicking left clicking and then basically just holding the left uh, left button on my mouse down to fill it in okay so that's that's the pants now I have a little bit of pe uh, a little bit of the color outside of here and so what I want all I have to do is right click select inverse and I can delete and that piece goes away. There's a little gap here too that I want to uh, fill in here so I'm going to select a smaller diameter and then just fill that in and that's that. So now we have a coat and we have pants. The next thing I want to do is I want to select the skin color of the character. So I'm going back to my original uh, already colored image and just select a hue right in there using the eyedropper again. Make a new layer. I'll just call this one skin. Skin, not sin. And again, I'm just going to select my pencil tool and just start coloring in basically all the exposed skin, which is going to be the face and the hands. And again, I'm just going around, filling this in. You can also use the paint bucket tool. Another thing you can do is you can select your magic wand tool and um, select the area within the hand. And, and uh, let's see if, as long as the uh, item is closed. So for instance, these two fingers here. Uh, if I select the magic wand tool and I select my black lines layer, and I can base, well, you got to make sure that contiguous is checked so it only selects what's inside the box. So I'll select that. Uh, I'm going to add to it, so I'm going to select this box up here. And now I can fill in with the paint bucket these fingers. That works too. A lot of different ways, a lot of different ways to do the same thing. It's just your choice. Uh, one thing I forgot to do is uh, to go back to my skin layer. So since I made that mistake, I'm going to select these colors here. I'm going to delete, click on my skin layer, and then fill them in again. That way everything, I can turn that off and on at will. And I always like to keep my layers separate so that if I make a mistake I could just go back and fix that one thing. So I'm going to stop here. We'll do a video two. We'll pick up where I left off uh, coloring in. So stay tuned for video two.